Well, hey, everyone. My name is Nathan Jones, and if you're new here, welcome. I used to talk about all things movies, specifically Blu-rays, and today we're doing another film journey. This time we have two guests, and it is Joe and Marie. How are you? How are you doing? I'm doing good. Hi. Hey. Uh, so, here. you doing good? <laughs> yeah. What you been up to, to tonight? Anything uh, film? Uh, uh, we watched Itsy Bitsy today. I was about it, and just, you know, did some stuff around the house, but we got uh, start that we haven't finished it yet we're going to finish it pretty much after this well excellent well i i also in the middle of something right now i i started something in in my room i'm trying to remember my mind's like all blank because like you know recently like all the the shows hit on the different like obi-wan came out and yeah stranger things stranger things yeah mm -hmm. so i've i've dipped my toes in that but i haven't like like i paused because things happen right <laughs> we're just always busy always always mm -hmm. um but yeah i, I so i've uh, if anyone is not familiar with this film series uh what we always do on the film journey is we have guests on here uh usually other uh, content creators and other people who just enjoy uh you know physical media and uh the, the content on the community and uh we just go through uh their early memories with film all the way up to where they're at now and and anything in between and i'm sure we're going to go off topic a couple times but that's that's totally fair yeah. <laughs> so. Always happens. Yeah. Um, besides Itsy Bitsy, what have what have you both been watching like in the last week? Is there anything that's really popped out? <clears throat> um, we get limited time. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I know last night I watched Black Dog with Patrick Swayze. I watched that one. It's a movie that I haven't watched in a long time. I finally found the physical release of it. So I wanted to watch that one. It's a movie that I've always enjoyed. It has a uh, him and Meatloaf in it. <laughs> Meatloaf. I'm not sure if you've ever if you've ever seen it. I haven't. Uh, what what year did that come out? You Ooh, know? no, I do not. I would say it's it's later in his career. Okay, so probably around next to Kin time. If you uh, if you've seen that one, mm -hmm. I, I that one. I, it's been years <laughs> for that yeah, one. Yeah, it's been years. That's a great movie though. But yeah, and now you saw... brought up Meatloaf. Now I'm thinking Bat Out of Hell. So. <laughs> Me too. Before Dad and that, uh, we just watched, uh, both of us watched X. I was just going to say that before. What'd you think? We watched the movie. I really enjoyed it. It was it. good. I, yeah. I really enjoyed it. It's no Dollar Tree. No. When, when I first saw it, just from the, you know, people talking about it, there's a movie that Synapse released called uh, Life and Death of a Porno Gang. I'm not sure if you've ever seen I've that. I've heard of that title. I haven't seen it, though. It's a, it's a, I think it's a German movie that's subtitled so i was thinking is that like a remake of that but no it's nothing even so i had no it. idea what it was but i was interested the whole yeah time. it hooked us in right at the beginning yeah have you seen any other ty west movies um house of the devil i've seen house of the devil i did not enjoy it okay i, I i'm in I'm, I'm in the minority of that one me and marie I, both I like watched it, it. yeah, yeah. House of the devil no I don't, I don't think i no. liked it yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, yeah, a lot of a lot of uh, Ty West's films never really hit me. That one, for some odd reason, it just really hit. And then right after, right after uh, we bought it, I was like, "Well, I bought it the day it came out." But I saw that uh, there's a 4K release coming out of it. And I saw that artwork. I'm like, "Man, I love that artwork so much better." Did you? And if he likes an artwork better and I don't, or if he likes a movie and I don't, we keep it, and vice versa. That's why yeah. the collections. That's a, that's a uh, that's a good uh, enable <laughs> enabling yeah. little thing there. We're not going to take away something he likes, and he's yeah, like, "Yeah, ha have your talking dogs, have your several copies of this." Mm -hmm. Whereas I only have like nine copies of this. That's absolutely yeah. fair. Yeah. Did you stay till the end of the movie? Of which post one? Post credits of X. No, is there mm -hmm. post credits? There's post credits. Oh boy! Now I'm gonna have to go say. back. That's all I'm gonna say. After this, oh okay, thank but, you. Yeah, yeah, it's. I, I was able. I was lucky to stay in theaters, and of course, because Marvel has like tricked us. <laughs> anytime you ever go to any movie, uh -huh. you're like, hmm. I I know it's probably not going to happen, but and then like right as the credits are going, I just Google. I'm just like, is there something at the end of this? And now I'm just trained to do that. So and yeah. 
I was pleasantly surprised by the the bonus content that you'll get at the end. So oh, that's funny. I used to <clears throat> wait at the end just so I could see if it was made by HP or not because my yeah. mom worked for HP. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Wow. She's like, is HP on that one? I'm like, yeah. On all the logos. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. So yeah. so now um, we're gonna have to go back and put that in. Yeah, it's it's totally worth it. That's one of the best post credit scenes I've ever seen. So just saying. Uh, okay. But anyway um that's awesome yeah uh, x is is fun I, I really like it a lot of texas chainsaw massacre vibes so yes it's it's, qu it's quite fun so um okay so besides what we're currently watching let's go back all the way to the beginning so that, that always that first question is uh what are both of your earliest movie memories you can go first yeah <laughs> if you want my earliest memories um I had never been to the movie theater and I, I learned through somebody else's video that that was their first movie as well in the movie theater. And mine was the little mermaid. That was my mm. first movie theater movie. And I was like, five. were you terrified when, Ur like when Ursula at the end, Ursula? No, More she's kind of creepy, but she was okay. She's okay. And the first movie I believe that I got wrapped underneath the Christmas tree was Bambi. And then the first movie that my brother and I got together was E.T. And every time I watched it, I cried. Cried, cried, cried. So those are my first one. Those are incredible. I mean, all, all those movies are great. So, like, I'm yeah. sure you still like them all now, right? Yes. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. What, what about you? My, my <laughs> first movie in theaters was 1978, and it was the 30th anniversary of Beauty and the Beast. I, I went to go see that with my dad. And after that was uh, Empire Strikes Back, 1980. And <laughs> it was, those were like the first two that I remember going to see in theaters. In the early 80s, there was a lot of stuff that I went to go see. My, my uncle, not my uncle, my grandfather didn't know anything about ratings when it came to <laughs> ratings because I'm half Spanish, half German. He's Spanish. He didn't speak a really good English or anything. So he used to just bring me to movies. And he brought me to see Teachers, Last American Virgin, Police Academy. I still haven't seen it. And I was, I was in single I was, Yeah, I was in single digits when I went to go see all of these. Even uh, Friday the 13th Part 3. That was the first horror movie I ever saw at eight years old. But it, I didn't see Friday the 13th until I met him. Yeah. Like but, 30 um, plus. Those were a lot of the, the earliest memories I remember going to the theater. At home, I was, my first job was uh, doing a, a paper route when I was 10 years old. And I started, I started making, I had a big route. So I started making a little bit of, my, of money. And my grandmother, I wanted a TV for my room. So she, I got this little 13 inch RCA color TV that had the old knobs. You know? <clears throat> yeah. Click, 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 click. Yeah. The click, 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 click. And uh, I got uh, an old VCR. You know, it was a top loader when they came out. And um, the, the TV, the TV we bought at Zares that was pre Ames. And then uh, the VCR, my grandmother got it for me at Rent the Center because. She, I, you know, I had my paper, so she's like, "You just pay me every week, and I'll pay it, and you can have one." And I remember the first movie I rented when I was ten years old was Sharky's Machine, with uh, um, Burt Reynolds. I loved that movie. I just, I, I remember sitting there watching it. It was just uh, a great memory of mine. Mm -hmm. So that movie always sticks out to me. That just reminded me of a memory. I just want to pop in real quick. Uh, every Friday night, we used to go about a mile up the road, and it was the Ashby Market because we lived in a small town with, like, nothing, and we used to rent a movie. My dad used to take us, and I got all Disney movies. No horror. We yeah. just go right to the Disney section. No, That's no Ursula. Like, uh, well, I'm just still on that Ursula thing. I was like, it's like they, <laughs> they can make a side thing where it's just all, I mean, I know Winnie the Pooh is having a, a horror movie coming out soon. Yeah, so I, I saw that. <laughs> no. 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 <laughs> yeah. Just no. That, that's, that was um, the thing that, you know, with Marie and I, because <laughs> we grew up 
really different. Our ages are a little bit apart. And, and that is, as well, it's, um, she really never watched any horror before me. No, so I've I been like introducing none. her to a lot of horror, a lot of foreign films, and something I never watched. I never watched any Disney animated. Sleeping Beauty was the only thing I ever watched, and I didn't watch another animated movie from Disney till I was till I met Marie. <laughs> I, to this day, I've still never se- I've never seen Aladdin. I just watched Little Mermaid for the first time. I just watched Bambi for the first time. Oh no! I've you never watched. Watch I when I was younger, I liked watching uh, live action Disney. You know the Herbies and all that because it was on TV. Yeah, yeah, the fifties and seventies ones. Yeah, but I I never watched any animated stuff. I just looked at it as ah, I'm watching all this other stuff. I don't, you know, I'm past that. Well, thanks you to know. your grandpa, right? <laughs> yeah, thanks to my grandpa. He he it brought me up really quick when it came to film. It's like we're gonna go watch The Exorcist. I, I know that's, that that is something else. So <laughs> yeah, do you exactly. know I've seen um, Aliens back in the day? You saw the paper TV guide. And oh, my dad and my mom would look through it and say, oh, this is on. Oh, how about aliens? So they would be in their living room. We would be in our living room. And about 20 or 30 minutes later, they, they tell us a story of back uh, when I was uh, older. So I caught on to it. And 20 minutes later or so, I'd come in crying. We're aliens. What kind of movie is aliens? Oh, my God, it's rated R. And to <laughs> this day, I have never watched all of aliens traumatized for life yeah well i'm uh, gonna watch aliens by the time i'm 50 though i've never watched it that's a that's a milestone you got <laughs> for yeah i'm a hand talk yeah but that's pretty much our earliest memories that mm-hmm. i can that i remember like i said you know there's there's later parts like kind of like with marita i remember going to the theater finally by myself that i saw et in the theater twice cried both times mm-hmm. and then a little bit after I think it was I think I'm not sure if they all came out at the same in the same year but I remember going to the theater a lot and I saw um Breakin', Beat Street, Return of the Jedi I saw twice I saw- Footloose I saw twice and then I saw Heart to Hold with Rick Springfield three times this is all 1983, right? I, it was like, that was eight, I think it was like 83, 84, 85, because <clears throat> Breaking and Beach Street, I think, came out in 84, 85. I just saw Hard to Hold last year. Yeah. <laughs> I still thought, I've still not seen yeah. it. Oh, it's good. Yeah. It's pretty much just a Rick Springfield concert, but, <laughs> you know, kind of a day in the life. <laughs> yeah. But uh, it's still, mm-hmm. you know, in movies that just bring me back to that nostalgic time. So back, back, going back to that time, once you got to both your, I guess, teenage years, like what was your relationship with movies then? Whatever was popular. I used to go to the movies with uh, my high school friends. My parents, one of my parents would drop us off at the theater that was 15, 20 minutes away from the house. And we'd go catch a movie with uh, a bunch of our friends. And there was a sold out movie and there was like eight of us and we all wanted to sit together and we got oh, front row me. seats to Titanic. Oh, oh man. Like, front row seats. Like. <laughs> Jack's yeah, right there. Yeah, you're looking straight <laughs> up for that one. It really is a big ship, isn't it? <laughs> oh, yeah. All the people falling off. It was so close. Yeah, I, I've only had the, the front front row seats and I was to go see Meet the Parents. I had nothing better to do. And I, I knew nothing about that movie. No trailer, no nothing. Oh. And I sat in the in the front, and I was looking at it like this, mm-hmm. and I was in tears. That to this day, the movie I have seen the most is Meet the Parents, just because that movie came. That and The Matrix were, were two movies that just came out of nowhere for me. That I didn't know nothing about. Went in blind and blew me away in theaters. There's but, no surprise, yeah. my movie I've and, seen the most. In like teenage years, um, that's kind of. I pretty much at that time just watched what was on TV. I didn't rent a lot because at that time I was playing. I was I was a, a drummer from when I was eight years old when I started learning until 1996. So I played a lot of in bands and practices and stuff like that. So I watched a lot of cable, you know, 
at that time I was watching Real Genius with Val Kilner and you know, uh, the later Police Academy, the later Friday the 13th. I saw, I went to go see uh, the final chapter in theaters at that time. I remember going to see, uh, even though unpopular opinion, Friday the 13th, New Blood, still my favorite one when I saw that in theaters. The whole Carrie versus Jason kind of, it just blew me away, you know, that, that they came up with that kind of concept, even though it wasn't executed that well, but. Um, at that time, I was watching a lot of, in Massachusetts, we had on Saturdays, I think it was Saturdays or Sundays, we had a thing called uh, Kung Fu Theater that was mm -hmm. on at noontime. And then at one o'clock, we had something that was called Creature Double Feature that used to have Godzilla on it. And I, I was into a lot of those Kung Fu, you know, 70s style films at yeah. that time. And the Creature Double Features, they were showing a lot of Hammer Horror. So mm -hmm. I got into a lot of the, yeah, the Hammer Horror, mm -hmm. a lot of the, you know, the Christopher Lee films, a lot of the, you know, that style. That's what I was watching. They were showing one of the, a movie that I didn't know what it was for years. And it was uh, George A. Romero's um, Season of the Witch. That it was oh. one that I saw. Mm -hmm. And I saw it twice. They showed it one year and then around Halloween, they showed it the next year. It took me almost 15 years to find out what that movie was because I had no idea what it was. I, I had an, um, a few of those movies in my head that I <clears throat> took a long time from like, I watched clips of it. I'm like, what was that movie? And then eventually I figured it out. <laughs> yeah, it was, I did a, a horror battle on 4K D-Ray's channel recently for a movie that I saw. In 1984, I went to a double feature to see, um, what is it called? They Call Me Bruce for Bruce Campbell. Mm -hmm. And it was that movie and another movie, and I didn't know what it was. And I'm like, I, I remember a mausoleum. I remember kids, and they had to stay in it, this, that. And then people are like, oh, it's One Dark Night. MVD released it. And I'm like, really? And I, I, the next day I bought the movie and I was like, that was it. I watched it probably four times that day because it just brought me back to being in the theater, being so scared watching that movie and not watching it now. It's like, what was I thinking? Things aren't even scary. Yeah, yeah. But around that time, that's what I was watching a lot of. It was a lot of the seventies, you know, sixties kind of horror films. That's what I was really big into that. I was pretty much watching a lot on TV. And then, you know, more of the, the popular 80s films that were coming out around that time. I missed so while that. He was, yeah, sorry. It was, go ahead. No, I was just going to say, while he was doing that, I was going to jump in what I was going to be doing. Go ahead. go ahead. All right. Well, we had a landline. So mm -hmm. after I kind of stopped going to the theater with uh, my high school friends, drifted off and... Uh, we didn't go out as much because we were in college and stuff. We went to Blockbuster. Mm -hmm. We had a landline and my dad would pick up a movie from Blockbuster and you'd see all the releases on the wall. And I would go to the Disney section and the new releases section. So whatever, whatever was popular at like 1998, 2000-ish. Yeah. Would you remember any, anything in particular? Like, uh, like a, a memory like at home where you rented a, a movie that like it stuck with you i remember you were saying aliens on on tv oh my but... God. i'm still traumatized <laughs> um i used to rent a lot of the kids ones none of them really stick out in my mind i know swiss family robinson is one of her big ones the ashby market is my my big time renting i didn't rent too much at blockbuster but um we would you know rent a bunch of them yeah you know yeah uh, Napoleon talking dog movie, Swiss Family Robinson, um, George of the Jungle, Jungle to Jungle. I remember those. I remember those VHS covers. Oh, yeah. 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 Exactly. Aladdin. Mm -hmm. A lot of them. This is, yeah, this is bringing me back. Uh, what I was actually going to like carry on to with both of what you said is I actually kind of miss. Well, obviously, a lot of us miss the the going to a store and renting, and and obviously we're lucky now because we own these things, right? But uh, the whole the feature, like you were saying, with like the Kung Fu Saturday or like the you know uh, the double feature of the monsters, like like I I love that curation thing. Like I mm -hmm. wish it's almost like 
<clears throat> I'm going to go on a little rant here, but I, just a little one. Um, but like, I, I wish that things were a little bit simpler because there's so much, so much of this, so much of streaming. It's like, hey, can we just have like, a, can I have a TV guide and it says like, you know, at this time it's, you know, there's these different movies you can watch it. And it's like, I, I kind yeah. of yearn for those, those times where it's like, it's like you have to wait till five o'clock for this movie to come on. So yeah. But Did we're you see the table, uh, the cable TV guide when it scrolls on the channel? Yeah, I used to always see. Oh, what's that seven or eight? I kind of wanna. Yeah, I, re I remember the, when it, when they had the, the TV guide on the on TV that it's like, oh, it's this time, and you're waiting and waiting until it came back around. You couldn't just look. I remember those days. <laughs> I guess the closest thing to it now because uh, I watch basketball so like I've been watching the playoffs and that's that's the closest thing to live tv that I know about because yeah. you know but they have commercials and like that's but like now we're spoiled because like we can watch things on youtube we can watch things on streaming we have mm -hmm. physical media about it so we can pause and leave and stuff like that but yeah, that's. But now that we're all adults, it's it's kind of a blessing because like we don't have too much time, so we gotta we gotta pause anyway. So yeah, I, I totally agree with that. It's, yeah, it was a, it was a simple it was a simpler time back then. And mm. after Blockbuster, I fell off the wagon. I was an outdoors person. I started picking up the books, mm -hmm. so I didn't really watch hardly anything. So. What? How do you read? How how does read? Ah. <laughs> uh, I, I read a lot. I read uh, Ain of Green Gables. I read uh, The Hands Brinker and The Silver Skates. I read, um, oh, I read Heaven is for Real. I read uh, Fifty Shades of Grey. Mm -hmm. Classic. <laughs> I, classic book. I yeah. read a lot. <laughs> nice. Yeah. So what was that transition after, like, was it meeting Joe? Was yeah, like, 10 years of, like, no movies or something like that. And then Yeah, when I, when I first met her, she had, she had, again, a little small TV, a DVD <laughs> player, and then she had a small box in her closet of, like, 20 movies, and they uh -huh. were all, like, Disney. And, that, you know, and the typical, you know, collector is you know all dvds there was one blu-ray and it was frozen but it was all pretty much all <laughs> somebody DVDs. bought me that one too somebody bought it that's why oh yeah. that's great um so what so i guess joe for you what what was that first reaction like it's like oh well i guess uh <laughs> this is the girl i'm well, meeting yeah <laughs> i when when i first met her it was um i was just like you know i I showed her my collection at first. It was not even to the size that it was now because my it constantly it's a, it's an ebb and flow of stuff coming in and out as I watch it, and always constantly trying to make room and you know depending on what I my mood at the moment. So when I had like thirty movies and I saw his like couple hundreds at least, yeah, my jaw I, dropped. When, when she when she met me, I was right around probably around five thousand at the time. A lot. So I was just we we just started. You know, I was showing the different movies, introducing it to different ones, and just seeing, kind of giving her her own film journey of different branches of different styles of movies and see what she connected with and what she liked. And, you know, you know, what different things she's never seen and what she would, Mm -hmm. how, all the way down to how far I could push her to, in, in the horror envelope. I will watch anything once, but I do not like The House of Jack built, a Serbian film. Not for me. But he likes them, so they're in the collection. You don't need yeah. to watch the, this, at least the second one. Is very, <laughs> yeah, I, I, yeah. Um, are there any films that stand out, Marie, that, like, that you remember on that journey that you're like, oh, this is actually a, a great surprise or something like those movies you just mentioned were like, nope, never again. Um, he, he introduced me to some black and white. He introduced remember, me to musical. Yeah, titles. That's my really Fair that. Lady. I love My Fair Lady. I still I have love right on the Purple show. Rain. Mm -hmm. And I am pissed off that it took me forever to watch Christine. Yeah. That's one that I really. Yeah, that was glad. one that, that really, you know. And that, Bumblebee. Yeah. I was mad. I took too long to watch. Bumblebee. But uh, ones that he showed me. 
8.5 times out of 10, I like the movie. That's a good, that's a good, yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. It was more, the, the things that she didn't really care for was like more of the extreme horror. When you, when you get to that, she, she didn't really care for that style. You know, she watched them. She watched, uh, you know, when I said, you know, the Serbian film. She Arthur watched Papa Haggis. Yeah. Uh, that one, uh, Say Lo, she watched. Oh! oh. <laughs> but, you know, I, you know. My I, ears. But uh, she, that's, that was the, the ones that she didn't really care for that much. Certain, certain uh, dramas, if it's like too fast paced, too hot, you know, so, some of those. She doesn't really care for that much. Like The Departed, she really couldn't get into. <laughs> you were never really here. Yeah, that was another one. I that, that that that's a that's a tough one to watch too. And also, I mean, the the ending of that movie is really rough. So, mm -hmm. like, I can understand not liking it. So, um, but uh, I had a hard time with Wild Cherry. There was one scene in that movie that I literally heaved. I just couldn't do it. Yeah. That's that reminds me actually. So I, so I'm unfortunately, I guess it's a, it's an unfortunate side effect of wh wh where we are now, like in society, uh, cause we're just so desensitized to a lot of things. Yeah. But, um, so a lot of things don't really bother me too much. I also don't have kids. So, you know, I, obviously if I watch something, oh. it's something could, yeah, that might affect me later on, but there's a, everything everywhere all at once that just happened. Right. Mm -hmm. That, that, that movie that just came out um in in the movie uh this isn't spoiling anything but mm -hmm. guy's giving himself paper cuts to try to trip into another like universe and i'm like i could not see i could not watch it because i'm just like yeah. stop, stop doing the paper cut thing like oh he's yeah. a feet yeah he's a feet. i, I have yeah i have a problem watching anything any Quentin Tarantino film because of his foot, his foot fetish and me, oh my God. I, I can't stand looking at feet. Like, I don't care if it's animated. Uh, to me, that's like horror. That's like the most extreme horror, horror for me. <laughs> me, uh, it's clowns, but I love killer clowns. It's fun. Things. It's fun. That one's fun. So yeah. I, I don't do clowns. I, I don't do really terrify or Pennywise. That movie terrified me. The Tim Curry It. I watched it once when I was like eight or nine. Yep. I forgot about that one and traumatized with clowns. That did it. That was a that was an early memory of mine it. too. Um, obviously, I, I was born in '92, but because that came out a little bit before. But I had my parents had the DVD, uh, and I watched. It. Well, actually, they had the VHS back in like '97 or '98 or something like that. And I yeah. remember. Watching, that I remember that part at the very beginning with the bed sheets, and I'm just like, nah, I don't really want to, to mess with this anymore. <laughs> so yeah, yeah. The I, only the only movie that I remember when I was a kid that terrified me was uh, first time I saw Phantasm. I've still never seen it. I, have, I still haven't seen it either. <clears throat> yeah. the, the first Phantasm I remember watching that when it came out, and the and uh, that movie. I don't know for some reason that movie terrified me. That and Salem's Lot. Salem's Lot is scary. Yeah, yeah. Especially as a kid, that those two movies, I mean, just I freaked seen me Salem's out. Lot. Like, yeah. Oh, but <laughs> it's in the other room. That's his famous. Jeepers, line. Jeepers Creepers is actually my Salem's Lot. So I remember the first time that Jeepers Creepers came out, I was actually terrified of scary movies up until I actually have a memory of I Am Legend was actually the movie that like I I was there were scary parts in the movie, but that was the movie that like I got it. I'm like, okay, mm -hmm. I'm not as scared anymore. Um, yeah which was in the mid 2000s right so but like cheapers creepers was like early 2000s and i remember watching that and being like absolutely like nope i don't you know i don't want to anytime i saw a school bus i'm just like you know like that could well that's the second one but like anytime i saw a bus i'm just like it's like i don't really want to mess with that <laughs> so yeah me me with the, the film the only films that really get to me is flipping notebook well, no. For mm -hmm. horror is oh, anything, horror? anything that can really happen. The movie The Strangers. But that movie, I mean, it's, I'm at the edge of my seat every time I watch that movie. Because to me, anything that can really happen in real life, to me, just freaks me out. Mm -hmm. And anything like The Strangers, Cabin, Isolation, you know, 
that just, I don't know, for some reason, that just, those kind of movies terrify me. They're unnerving, yeah. 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 The They're... Shack is another one that I didn't like because of the content in it. I had to get rid of that Holy Roller film, The Shack. No, Even yeah. though it was pretty yeah. good. So, I'm... no clowns. No clowns, no Shack. <laughs> <laughs> no clowns and no anything with like a needle in the eye or oh, like yeah, dead yeah. kids. I, I don't like need anything in the eye or Dario Argento's The Opera. Oh, yeah. So, Dario Argento so, can do that a couple times. I mean, action. a lot of that Italian stuff. They could do Clowns yeah. and eyes. Funny. Well, mm. this is actually getting me uh, some ideas about your my next question, which would be, what are some of your favorite films? I know Marie Bambi, mm -hmm. right? Yes, I like Bambi. What else? What else besides Bambi? I, I, I can like? name more about, I, I, more about your Bambi love. <laughs> I. What about my Bambi love? I had the McDonald's toys. I had the Bambi sleeping bag, the read along book. The Bambi stuffed animal. Uh, yeah, I, I love Bambi. But um, Sweet Home Alabama is my go-to comfort flick, if you will. I just put mm -hmm. that in all the time. Uh, I I probably can name them easier than she can. Go ahead. Uh, you, I know Singing in the Rain. Oh. I need That's... to get 4K still. I've heard of great things about that. Yeah. Gene I... Kelly is phenomenal. Yeah. 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 Marie, Marie's big... A big Gene Kelly and Betty Davis fan. She oh. loves Betty Davis films. I, I mean, great people. So I yeah. get it. Yeah. But um, Christmas movie. But... Yeah. The, for me, some of my favorite films. My favorite film is Sound of Music. I love Sound of Music. Favorite film of all time. Now, you know. Depending throughout my life, my favorite films have always changed, but Sound of Music has has never dropped off that top tier just because of it's it's more than a film to me. It has there's branches off of that, you know, with family and everything else. So That's your Bambi. Watching it when I was a kid, so it always sits up there. But um, Texas Chainsaw Massacre, the original. Very uh, simple to Sound of Music. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, Harry Potter's uh, Prisoner of, of Azkaban. Ooh, that's my that's my favorite too. Yeah, that I never saw any of those till I met him. Um, that's all another movie. Own, so yeah, I... An another movie that I love is um, The Last Castle with um, Robert Redford. I'm a big fan. That's uh, a really good one of my favorite films, and then. Uh, what else? Uh, Argento's Deep Red is another one. I, that's the movie that got me into Italian cinema. Um, that's about it that I could think of off the top of my head. Those There's are, I mean, other. yeah, those are, I mean, those are both, all, all those movies are incredible. I still haven't seen that Redford film, though. I love Robert Redford, so. Yeah. The Natural, he was in The Natural. That's a great uh, movie. Yeah. I like that one. Mine are all Disney's and Bambi mostly. Yeah, the last the last castle it has him and uh, what's his name James Gandolfini in it. Oh, okay, and that's a fantastic film. Yeah, okay. you should really check it out. What are your favorite I laugh movies? Mine are Think Like a Man and I Love You Man and um, what was the other one? Those two. Yeah. Walk Like a Man with Howard Mandel. Oh, that one, yeah. That's that's my movie. I'll I put in Think Like a Man and I Love You Man. Those are my favorite laugh movies. I love it. I, I really enjoy I Love You Man. Uh, back in the day, you can't see it now because of the hair, but uh, in my high school days, I was definitely, uh, people told me, like, I look like Paul Rudd. So uh, so I, I, I was happy about that. Um, mm -hmm. But, you know, obviously I'm bald now got a beard he doesn't really rock beards but i love that movie yeah. and I, yeah that that that's a really great uh that's that's yeah. a comfort film for me yeah it's it's one of mine that uh you have to smile when i when i say it when, I whenever to. i watch that movie i it's it's <laughs> me i'm not a comedy guy anymore i'm to me i love you man is like that's like the cliff after i love you man i think pretty much comedy died it never had the soul that it did that it had uh, before I Love You Man and me you know being the kid of the 80s 80s comedies just 
that's that's what I pretty much gravitate towards. And that style it was more unapologetic, less PC, and you know, movies that came out in those days, so you, you would never see them made to this, even to this day. Oh yeah, I know, the content. Something like like uh, I know you said eighties, but like late eight seventies, like The Jerk is like a good yeah. like uh, that's that's a, that film, that movie just cracks me up. Uh, yeah, Top Secret. I know that Top Secret. I love that movie. I gotta see that movie. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you'll have a good time with it. It's very fun. Um, yeah, but yeah, you're yeah. You know, those are those are all incredible. Um, what about like uh, directors? Do you have any favorite directors? Uh, directors. For my my favorite is Argento. I'm a big Argento fan. I love all his films. I watch all of pretty much anything he releases. Uh, I like Spielberg. Yes, same. I'm a big Spielberg fan. Um, somebody that's not as well known, but the two films that she did release, I love both of them. And it's uh, Jennifer Kent that did... Um, the Nightingale, and she did. Um, I'm drawing a blank. Wait for it. Wait Was for it. it. The Babadook. Oh, oh no, yeah. no, 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 no. She did no, the Babadook no. and she did the Nightingale. And both of those movies, that's the type of, of, are, of, of films I like. I like more the psychological, more, you know, style movie that's why a lot of people hate hereditary but i love hereditary I love just hereditary. because i love i love that style film i'm more of a psychological style film stuff in the shadows stuff you know the way they film it's the the movies that are really unsettling to me and and really get to me are, are more films that style oh my. same here the ones you, I, honestly the less you see the better that's yeah. that's that's that's, 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 stuff that's I what i enjoy so yeah. You know those those two directors I really like. Um, I can't, she did the Babadook. Yeah, she did I was Babadook. traumatized. I had to pause it and watch the rest the next day. Yeah, um, I've always been like, a fan of Jenna, uh, John Carpenter as well. You know, Starman. Ma- yeah, Marie. That's, like that's my childhood. Yeah, that's one of Marie's Starman. childhood movies. I have Starman. A VHS. Oh, you're saying that's what happened in your childhood. There was. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, those are those are pretty much the top directors for me that you know come right to the top of my head. Those are incredible. What about you, Marie? Uh, I would say Steven Spielberg and Stephen King. I like those. Sleepwalkers was like one of my little horrors before I met him. Mm. I still haven't seen Sleepwalker. No. No, I know it's. Good. I've, heard it, I've heard they're fun though, so. Yeah, that's good. So uh, I definitely have I have some blind spots in my collection, but they're all over there on the other side, waiting for me. Eventually, I'll get there one day. Um, like I said, Starman, for instance, well, that was last year, not that long ago. Yeah, like I want to say eight months ago or something like that. It was the first time I saw it, and I was really pleased by it. So that one was like a day one. Need to order that. Want the slip with that one? I got the yeah. slip <laughs> out on that too. So. What about uh, actors? Actors. My favorite actor is Gary Oldman. Ooh. Uh, I'm a big Gary Oldman fan. When I saw him in Sid and Nancy and Leon the Professional, Ed, that's sealed it for me. I, I've always been a fan, and I pretty much watch anything that he's in. And again, Harry Potter, Prisoner of Azkaban. Yeah. And, you know. He's serious. Sirius is one of the best characters, so I completely. Yeah. So I was. Uh, when it comes to actors, I've always gravitated to, towards him. Same thing, Robert Redford. I've always been a fan of. I love Redford. Um, for females, I've always been um, a fan of. <laughs> I, I, I've always been a fan of Kathy Bates. I've always been a fan of. Um, hmm. Okay. No, uh, okay. I was gonna say Kate Blanchett. I'm a big fan. Oh, of I love Kate. Yeah, yeah, he does a, a, a lot of films that I like. He's in my top five. So yeah, she's incredible. So for actor, I like Tom Hanks. 
and a couple of guys from the Hallmark that I'm blanking on that are more of just eye candy, <laughs> of course. Oh, and that, that counts and, too. Hey, that counts, yeah. Yeah. And actress, people are going to make me choose between Dolly Parton and what was that? Was that other act, actress that I liked? Wah, wah. Betty Davis. I know you like Betty Davis. No, it was, it was between my two favorite ones. It was, it, it's simple too, and I can't even think of it. But I do like um, Julia Roberts, Meg Ryan. Mostly, mostly Jennifer Aniston and Dolly Parton. Gotta have Dolly. Yeah. It's gonna kick me in the You'll come to it. You'll come to it later I, when oh, yeah. you know, I throw it out there. Um, but speaking of, you said Meg Ryan and Tom Hanks. I just, Who's I just, in Sweet Home Alabama? Sweet Reese Witherspoon. Yes, she is Reese Witherspoon. Yeah, he's great. Um, but you, I, you said Tom Hanks and Meg Ryan. I just watched You've Got Mail for the first time. Oh, wow. Yeah. I, I love that movie. I love yeah, that movie. I, I Shop love, Around the Corner is I also like watched the first time. Right after. Shop around the corner. Backwards. So, <laughs> so I did too. Yeah. And you pick out all the things that are similar or work around it. Yeah. E- even it. though, even though uh you got mail didn't age well because of the whole AOL yeah. and right. everything. Yeah. But I still love that movie. Oh yeah, it's great. Oh yeah. And then they invented like spree and uh the friend. Yeah. I love the Fox and Friends, Barnes and Noble kind of thing going on there. I'm just yeah. like, you catch on that really quick. It's like, oh, I know what this is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, um, but I guess thinking about those actors and those directors. <clears throat> now, thinking about both of yourselves, who, who um, if you could be in any of those directors or actors films, uh, who, who would you be around? Who would you want to be? Who would you want to work with? If I had to... You play a small part, a big part, doesn't matter. Maybe even an extra. So if if for me it would be Jennifer Kent. I would I would I would love to work with somebody that's more up and coming. And I said for the two movies that she did, they totally blew me away that I would want to work with somebody like that. I honestly don't know a lot of directors because I just jumped in because I I, I went off the tracks around my like 20s or so. So Steven Spielberg and anybody that does Disney titles, I'm pretty much sold. You <laughs> want to be animated. You want to be animated, okay. <laughs> okay, so now this actually, this is actually good because now my next question, which is even tougher, which is unfortunate, but um, if your life was a movie, what would the title be? Beautiful so. Disaster. Beautiful. There you came. To, you came with it real quick. Beautiful disaster. Controlled chaos. Control. <laughs> I love it. It's kind of a, the antonyms of each other. Beautiful disaster and controlled chaos. Um, Nothing with nightmares. That's good. Yeah. 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 Any, no. Any elaboration on that, or just that's not enough said. Uh, the reason I, I say control chaos is because just with life in general and with everything, it's always a constant how many plates can you spin at once without everything falling around you and crashing so it's just trying to keep everything everything in life especially with the way things are now it's just sometimes your life looks like a mess but you have everything the way it has to be for yeah yeah, for for you to, to to stay sane sometimes you took the words right out of my mouth because you got to take the time to like I like to look at the stars and astronomy and I notice a sunrise or the colors. And then I notice, oh, what the hell happened to my day? This didn't go right. That didn't go right. I'm feeling down. Um, I can't do this. I'm dropping everything today. I'm a disaster. You know what I mean? Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. I, I mean, that both, of, both of your titles definitely encapsulate, uh, obviously, specifically to you, but also is very relatable you know, to who wants to watch this, these movies that you would create here. At the end. Yeah, I, 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 you know, like I've always said, I, I try to, to stay real and say how I feel. And I, I would say that's 
that probably our titles would be mostly relatable to 80% of the people that would probably watch mm -hmm. this, but they just wouldn't say it. Yeah. Well, hopefully, hopefully they would, they would watch it and, you know, nod along and maybe, maybe they'd have the, the guts to say it. So, yeah. <laughs> um, I guess uh, as we're kind of, you know, encapsulating all of that right there, uh, thinking about just this, this, uh, this medium as a whole movies, um, how has it kind of changed your worldview or your perspective on life? Um, for me, with movies, for, movies have always been, when I was younger and even after I had a bad motorcycle accident and I couldn't play in music anymore. So that's how I really got into movies. But to me, movies have always been a, an escape for me to just try to see the perspective through other people's eyes of, you know, their lives or um, sometimes it's just like a coping mechanism. It's, it has been for me, especially when I was younger because of different things that happened in my life. Um, a it was funny that and I'm going to mention somebody that was on your channel. When I was on Plaid's Top 5, and I watched it back, I never realized a lot of the movies that I showed all had a common thread throughout all five. It's everything that I picked kind of was like the best of both worlds or two different types of people connecting. And I think, you know, a lot of those movies kind of gravitated towards me, even thinking about it after and even now it's, I've always looked at it as, since I had a rough childhood. Same. Um, sometimes I looked at it as, my life isn't so bad. It's like back in the day, I used to watch Jerry Springer go, at least my life isn't that bad. Like Jerry, yeah. And I, I'm, I'm okay. I used to watch it to appreciate yeah. my life. So I, I looked at it as, you know, even with movies, sometimes looking at things through other people's eyes makes you, A, feel better about yourself, or sometimes you can see the pain in somebody else's eyes and you can connect with something like... Um, What was, what was the movie that we just watched? One that I, I kind of really connected with recently was, um, what's the movie that had uh, Glenn from The Walking Dead in it, if you remember? Uh, Minari? Minari. Oh. Minari, for some reason, Minari, I really connected with. I don't know, for some reason, that movie, a couple of days later, I kind of really sat down and thought about it, you know, and it really... I don't know, for some reason, I just really connected with that film. I don't know why, but it's just that, you know, to me, that's what film has always kind of meant to me. It's, I don't know, I always felt that as, as an escape, especially when I was younger, like I said, because I grew up with a, a really bad childhood. It was always an escape to get away from what I was going through. Mine was Curly Sue. Yeah. And... I love Hallmark because it's predictable, but I, I want to see their life. I want to see their relationship and uh, the drama and then things work out. I like the Hallmark. Yeah. That's, Marie's really gravitated towards those. I like the stories and musicals. So. Yeah. And it's just, yeah, that's pretty much, you know. I can't believe I forgot to mention Curly Sue. Oh yeah, Curly Sue. That's a big one. That's a great one. I yeah, I, I remember the opening of that film. Like mm -hmm. it's like imprinted into my mind when, when and I when I got adopted, I had long hair down in my back and my mom couldn't braid hair and she's like, What do I do with this girl with this girl long hair? Cut it. Like chopped it like a boy's haircut mm -hmm. and framed my face and I had bangs and everything. How did that feel? Yeah. Be? It was very different. Yep. And my, my hair was more straight. And then when I turned 13, it just blew up and went curly. And I'm 80s hair forever now. 80s yeah. hair? Oh, yeah. Well, one of her friends for years have always called her Curly Sue because her hair is 
like hers. Yeah. <laughs> well, I don't have hair now, so I don't know how that feels. So, <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess I have this, but um, yeah, yeah. Um, it just all slid down. It all slid down. I just, I just turn it. I, you know, I put this on my nightshade at night when I go to bed. You know, mm -hmm. I put it back on in the morning. I can put it on here and flip it. You know, that's just how it goes. So, mm -hmm. um, well, uh, you know, I, I this has been uh, a lot of fun. Um, I feel like we can talk forever about you know whatever's going on um, with mm -hmm. what, whatever subject that would come up. But. Um, sure. Do you have any final thoughts about uh, yeah, film journey? <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> no, I'm just always looking forward to what's coming out next and, you know, what's around the, the next corner with film and, you know, always constantly trying to, to try different genres and, mm -hmm. you know, different things out there and see what's out there that I still haven't explored. I like to watch the comfort movies, the Disney's, and I kind of like lean on our son. I'm like, he likes Disney. I, I'll watch that again. But there's a ton that I have watched that I would have never touch with a 10 foot pole. Okay. Yeah. Do you pole? understand the words that are coming out of my mouth? No. <laughs> there's a lot I wouldn't have touched with a 10 foot pole. And I'm proud of myself for watching them. And it's like, oh, it's not that bad. But yeah. I found out that I like the black and white a little bit. I like the musicals. I like um, monsters and anything that has to do with like powers and magic and wishes and stuff like that. Yeah, I, I'm a big fantasy fan myself. I mean, I know you yeah. mentioned Harry Potter and um, like, for instance, for me, like Lord of the Rings, I've talked about yeah. times. Um, I mean, I grew up with those movies and like uh i guess well harry potter I, I grew up with those too so like just those universes i always love to escape to yeah. myself ha yeah to me harry potter is my favorite franchise of all time but lord of the rings is right under i remember going to one of those uh five dollar theaters and they mm -hmm. actually when uh, the last one came out they actually did all three of them wow. for five for five dollars and I sat there for 13 hours and oh I watched gosh. every single one of them yeah, in you, one of those uncomfortable theaters. That's what I was going to say. How, how uncomfortable was that seat? Because I remember. It was, yeah, they were just the old seats. Did they have gum on it? And stuff? No, yeah. it, it was the old seats that didn't even have cup holders. Yep. No, just, they didn't. They didn't. Um, yeah, because I. We had, a, we had a $5. We had a $5 theater. Uh, actually, it closed. I want to say six or seven years ago, it's now a church now. Yeah. Um, so it's, but like it, those $5 theaters, those, are, those aren't really a thing anymore. So it's, it's kind of sad. Um, but anyway, I don't want to, I don't want to end on a sad note, but. <laughs> oh, the last thing I want to say is Pippi Longstocking. Have you heard of her? Oh yeah. The red, I had every VHS of hers and I used to watch it all the time because she was a, a little girl living on her own and stuff and going on adventures. I remember, I, I remember watching that movie. My sister, I, she had that VHS, so. I, I had them all, and I watched them all. Pippi was my, my favorite when I was eight mm -hmm. or nine. Yeah, it's good stuff. Okay. I, I, I need to start growing it out. That's my next move. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's Pippi long talking hair, so. Yeah. Um, wire hangers. Wire hangers. Well, you got to do the wire hanger challenge thing, right? Turns yeah. Out Apparently. So I don't know. Um, so uh, final thoughts. I know we just did that, but where can everyone find you? Uh, you can find us on Instagram, uh, Marie Babbitt on Instagram and Martinez Joe 74. And as well as you can find us on YouTube under Martinez Joe 74. We and do. my Instagram link is finally on there now. Yeah. You can, if you go, there. yeah. And you can find us pretty much on YouTube. Every week, Saturday morning, 7 a.m., we drop weekly videos for the last six years now. No, four years now. I'm like, I don't know you. <laughs> I don't know how many years. <laughs> yeah, four um, years. Well, it, it's been a blast talking to you both, and I, I'm really happy that I was able to, to chat with you. And, uh, yeah, this is uh, a lot of fun. I hope everyone uh, also enjoyed this, this conversation. Uh, I would love to see what everyone thinks down in the comment section. So check out the yeah. link down there. Um, Thank you so much for both for coming on. Yeah, I appreciate it. Thanks for uh, reaching out to us and having us on. We really had a great time with it. Yeah. Thank you. 
Well, I hope everyone enjoyed uh, our conversation and uh, had some some good laughs and and some good, uh, you know, now we're going to be scared, scared of some things now. I, I kind of want to revisit some things now that we just got to talking about some movies. So, mm-hmm. um, but uh, thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Like I said, uh, make sure to comment down below, share, hit the notification bell, subscribe, and we'll see you next time. I'm not jonesing around. Uh-huh.